Hello everyone, so in this video I'm going to be showing you how you can edit the contents of the HTML class attribute using JavaScript. So what you see on screen at the moment is a very basic unstyled HTML document and I'll show you the live DOM. It's only got one element inside the body which is this main element and inside there there's some lorem ipsum text. So what I'm going to be doing is showing you how you can create a class attribute for this element and how you can edit the list of class names. So in my HTML document, I've already defined some styles that I'm going to be applying to this element. So I've got this one content, which provides some basic formatting. The rest are fairly self-explanatory. Text large makes the font size larger. Text white, background blue, border, and no display, setting the display to none. So if I applied that class, then the element would not be visible to the user. So let's see how we can apply some of these styles to the main element in the DOM by creating and editing the class attribute on it. So I'm going to be writing the JavaScript here live in the browser rather than in Visual Studio Code. And that is so you can see the impact of changing the class list live on the page. And also if I want to see the live representation of the DOM, check the class list values on the main element, I can just click on elements and see that updated live. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is to select the main element. Now it doesn't have an ID, so I'm going to select it by its tag name using the query selector. So I'm going to store this in a variable, I'll call it content. And I type query selector, and I'm selecting it by its tag name. So I don't need to add any syntax here other than main. And just to check it was selected, I'll call it here. And you can see there is the element that I have selected. Okay, so let's start by setting an attribute list for the element. And there are two ways to do this. So the first way you can do it is using the set attribute method, which you call on the element. And this is the way you can set an attribute value for any kind of attribute. So in this case, we're setting class and I'm going to give it the content class and text large. So this is going to create a class attribute on the main element and that's going to therefore apply the styles that I set in my CSS. So you can see them there now. Now, if I was to use set attribute to set the class again in this way, what would happen is it would overwrite the value I've given it with the new value. And this would happen silently, so there wouldn't be an error. So this is something to keep in mind when you're using set attribute. Now, there's a second and shorter way of doing this, which is by setting the value of the class name property on the element. So it's content dot class name. And actually, if you just entered this on its own, it would return the value of class name currently. So that's content and text large, which we set using set attribute. But what I want to do here is to set a new value for it. So I'm going to set the new value to, again, content and text large, and I'll add a border this time. So I'll set this now, and you can see that a border has appeared around the text. Now, if I head over to the DOM, you see that the class attribute has content, text large, and border on it. So just like set attribute, if you use class name and set the value of the class attribute, it's going to overwrite any existing value that's already there. So both of these are kind of like a sledgehammer approach to setting the class attribute because they overwrite anything that's already there with the new value. But in practice, you often want to respect the class list that's already there. You might want to just add one name to the list or remove one. So let's take a look at how you can do that now. And the way that you do that is using methods that are located on the class list object on the element. So to access it, you say content.classList. So the methods are directly available on this class list object. So to add names to the list, you call the add method. And inside there, you pass in a comma separated list with the names that you want to add. So in this case, I'm going to add the names BG Blue, and I'm going to add a second one here. So you can add more than one at the same time. I'm going to say text white because otherwise the text won't show up on the blue background. So you see those have been added to the list. You can see that in the styles. You can also see that here in the DOM now. 
Now, if you want to remove a name from the list, then you want to use the remove method. So again, content dot class list, all the methods are available there. This time it's remove, and this time I'm going to remove the border from the class list. So you can see the border has gone and no more border in the attribute list. Now, an interesting one that you can use is toggle. So what toggle is going to do is it's going to add a name to the class list if it doesn't already exist. If it does exist, then it's going to remove it from the class list. So you can use this to toggle back and forth whether a style is applied to an element. So to do this, it's content.classList.toggle. And then I'm going to toggle the no display class. So if I call this now, no display is not on the class list, it's going to be added to the class list and the element will no longer be visible. If I go to the DOM, you see that all of the class names are still there, but now because there's no display included, you can't see the element on the page. Now, if I call toggle again, it's on the class list. So this time it's going to remove it from the class list and we're going to see the element again. So toggle can be useful in this way. An example of where this can be useful in practice is allowing a user to click a button that will toggle the visibility of an element on the page. Now, if you want to check if a name exists on the list, you can do this using the contains method. So this is also located on the class list object and it's going to return true if it exists and false otherwise. So this is not changing the contents of the list in any way, it's just inspecting it. So we can check here if it contains border, which it doesn't at the moment. So that's returning false. Let's see if it contains text white, that should return true. So this can sometimes come in handy. Now to finish the tutorial, I want to show you how you can completely remove the class attribute from the element we created so that we end up back at the beginning of the tutorial where there was no class attribute in the first place. So one way that you can remove all the styling is to say content dot class name and to set the value of this to an empty string. But in this case, if we go to the DOM, we see that the class attribute still exists on the element. And if I check whether it exists using the has attribute method, so use that by calling has attribute on the element and typing in the one you want to check for. So if I check for class, you see that it is returning true. So even though there are no names on the class list, the class attribute still exists on the element. So what you need to do to remove the class attribute completely from the element is to use the remove attribute method. And this is directly available on the element. So call remove attribute and then Inside, you pass in the name of the attribute that you want to remove from this element. So in this case, class. Now, if I check if content has attribute class, that's now returning false. And you see in the DOM, it no longer exists. So that is how you work with class lists in JavaScript. And that is it for this tutorial. So I hope you found it useful. If you did, please consider hitting the like button down below this video. And in case you want to see more content like this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel.